All right, everybody, uh, today we're going to just do a quick little review on uh, Compare software as it relates to the grading of dental morphology wax ups. So, we're going to just do a quick troubleshooting guide and how to basically you open up the design software and make sure you have connected your red and white connector, add your name and the tooth that you're going to be working on and then hit the arrow, start a new restoration, select the tooth by clicking on the actual tooth, not the tab, and then randomly fill in these items here which are not important for the purposes of grading. It's important that you're under the prep scan folder. Um, sometimes it defaults to other folders. Make sure prep is highlighted orange there. And for good scanning, it's essential to come from an occlusal or incisal straight down view when you're first starting the scan. Let it get a little bit and then you could start um, doing your rotations after you have some of that straight down incisal view. And here we're going to a lingual roll. I like to roll to the lingual first. And then a gentle roll to the buckle. And finally, um, coming down to almost a flat 90 degree angle there on the facial surface, trying to rotate into those embrasures, mesial and distally. All right, check for any extraneous data like lips, cheeks, fingers, anything like that, and go ahead and erase that. and generate your model and immediately check for low data by hitting the exclamation point right there and it's okay to have a little bit of blue deep within your embrasures and if you have some blue on adjacent teeth it's not the end of the world but your master or your wax up whatever you're doing your grading in should be pretty nice if you missed an area that you thought was essential to the model you could just go ahead and like for example that premolar area Click the power button on and go immediately to that spot, um, making sure that you have enough data to allow it to stitch that back in. So if it was a significant area, you would have wanted to start on a tooth that you already had scanned in perfectly and then go to the defect. And there we've gotten that area better. One thing that you don't want to do is start off scanning from a lingual view, like shown here or that for that matter a straight facial view. So this is what goes wrong when you don't scan from a straight down incisal view. So here we're just generating our model just like before except we maybe accidentally started from a kind of a more of a lingual tilt. And then we can see it looks good on the lingual but then when you rotate that model around you have all this weird stuff on the buckle. That same thing happens if you do from like a, a buckle tilt at first. In addition, you don't want to scan backwards. That is, although we have a good incisal view here, the tip is pointed towards the mesial of that cuspid rather than um, facing towards the distal of that canine. And so everything's fine with the scan. You'll just have a little bit of trouble later on when you go to align that model. So although the scan will look nice, it's just um, orientated backwards. Yeah, so we'll find out later on what happens when we do that. Open the compare software and maximize it so that you could better see uh, what's going on. You're going to load your master model. It's on a folder on your desktop. There's a shortcut on your desktop called Patience. And just find the folder that's your name or that your masters. And you're going to click through the subfolders until you get to the prep folder and select that. So here we have loaded the master for that number 11 there. And then likewise, you could up arrow or you could just go to your desktop and find the patient's folder and then find the, the tooth that you're wishing to evaluate under the sample. And once again, subfolders until you get to the prep folder on that. And it is either going to do one or two things. It's going to automatically align those or it's going to not. And so if it doesn't, you just go to the define tab and you click the um, drag icon there and you get them in the ballpark. Definitely not perfect here and you don't need to be. 
if you click in the middle, it goes straight down. If you click on the sides, it turns. Okay, so you want to maybe just drag it from the middle tooth and then fine tune it by quick, clicking on the edges and then you could rotate it. The check mark will do the rest for you. So now we could see we have a, a better adaptation of those two separate and distinct models from those two scans. And we could check, but I, I usually don't. But you could slice it and see, you know, how close are those two different models on the um, adjacent teeth. And so we're pretty close here, um, almost indistinguishable. So we're good. And once you verified that, um, I usually just skip that slice step <clears throat> after doing a lot and find that it's usually pretty good anyway. You mark your margin. So go to the trace finish line tab. And then we're going to go ahead and start somewhere you could see and just click along the tooth, circumscribe the area to which you wish to grade. And that's, you know, faster is better. You don't need to spend so much time on this because you could edit it once you seal it by just dragging the lasso. If you single click the line, it straightens automatically. So you could just click, 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 and it will start to straighten up. If you had um, some crazy defect like this by accident, you might need to use a different tool, and that's the Add Segments tool. It's that pencil right there, and you click before the defect, then after the defect, and go back to the pencil tool to lock it in, and it will heal that area. All right, we're ready for Compare. Um, just click the Compare tab. Um, I like to make my model bigger by hitting the um, center icon down there, and you should notice that only colors that are showing are inside that lasso line that you drew. Likewise, you could superimpose the master and then slice it. Just to verify colors are correct and defects are correct, you could notice that the faculty master or preparation or wax up or whatever that's going to be the master is white or gray color and the student's always going to be that stone gold color. Here we go, we're slicing over this area and you hit the pencil on the measurement tool and you click between the two lines and it's gonna go throw out some numbers there um, where you're off. But you really don't need to do that slicing. It's kind of sometimes cool to see, but you could just ghost over your mouse on anywhere and it's automatically gonna update with a micron number and it's just gonna change wherever you scroll your mouse over. So that's kind of doing the slice without having to slice. In addition, you have the color map there. So for purposes of taking a screen capture, you could um, hit the Snippet tool, hit New, and just circumscribe everything. Make sure you get your metrics or numbers there on the right. Write your name and then save that file um, in a folder called Snips on your desktop. And then you could print that later um, to turn it in. All right, let's see what happens when we load something that was scanned backwards. This is what you get. You get models that are just aligned differently, so you have to finagle with it. And it's definitely easy to do after you practice for a while, but it's just something that you don't want to do all the time. So it's better just to scan it right to begin with. Also, there's some things that you need to know when marking your margin. Highlight the low data down there. You see I just clicked that and it turned it pink um, where you have bad data. Don't put your margins on pink data because you'll get, when you do your difference map, you'll get like weird stuff. What happens is those margins are falling off into infinity somewhere because there's really no data there. Likewise, if you have a really good scan like here and you want to go underneath your embrasures, which would, you would think would be okay, don't do that because what happens is it's going to analyze the whole model um, and your grade's going to be affected based because it's going to look at everything, um, which you don't want to because the scans are going to be a little different. You know, maybe you scanned a little bit more tissue on one, etc. So avoid that. Um, we don't need to do that. And let's see. Just to show you the accuracy of the stitching, if you pick the same model twice, so we're having the same models here, now we're going to go ahead and align those two different models, and you almost can't even see them. If you zoom in really close, you can see the speckled difference. There's no difference. So when it aligns those two models that are the same scan, 
obviously, hopefully, you would get zero on the difference map when you do the compare of the whole model. So no matter where I scroll my mouse, I'm getting zero microns all over. Um, so you can't see any color difference. Likewise, if you go ahead and slice that by superimposing on the master or the two different models, you, you won't get any differences anywhere. So that's good to know that you know it does align very accurately. When you're done, unplug it, the red from the white or the black from the white, and then shut down the computer. And I appreciate you guys being patient and everything, um, and I hope that this software helps you see errors that you just normally can't see.